All right, so in this one, we're looking at double angle identities. Now, you already know about angle sum and angle difference identities. Now, double angle identities are just a very specific case of those. All right, so let's prove our double angle identities. Now, sine 2a, this is what we mean by double angle identity, 2a's double angle. All right, we can rewrite that as an angle sum, which is sine a plus a, and then we can simply uh, use our angle sum identity. All right, now this is this specific one uh, applied in the angle sum identity, because usually it's a plus b, but because it's an a plus an a, uh, we put the a in here and we put this a in here. Now, sine a cos a plus cos a sine a, these are like terms, right? Uh, sine a cos a and cos a sine a are equivalent, because this could just be written like that, and they would be exactly the same which means that we end up with two lots of sine a cos a. Now we don't really need those uh, brackets there, and that leads us to this, our first double angle identity. Sine 2a equals 2 times sine a cos a. Now you can do the same thing for cos 2a, now, you might want to pause the video here and think about what is the cosine double angle identity. And obviously, you're going to use uh, the cosine angle sum identity to help you figure out what this one should be. All right, so here I'm getting into it. Cos 2a is the same as cos a plus a. Now, normally that would be a and b for an angle sum. Uh, and then we put the a in here and the b in there. But because they're both a, we're putting the a's in there like that. Minus sine a sine b, sine a, sine a. Now cos a times cos a is obviously cos squared a, and sine a times sine a is sine squared a. So we get a nice little identity that looks like that. Cosine 2a equals cos squared a minus sine squared a. So this is our double angle identity for sine, and this is our double angle identity for cos. Now this one is not that interesting. We kind of hold on to this one and we use it just as is. But uh, there are some useful forms of this one. Uh, you kind of have sort of three forms that you might want to use. Look at cos squared a. What does that remind you of? Uh, Pythagorean identity, right? We could write cos squared a as uh, 1 minus sine squared a, and then subtract that sine squared a, and we get this, 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Now, this is uh, very, very useful, and it is another form of the cosine double angle identity that might come in useful. Now, why would that be useful? Well, look at what you've got. You've got cos and a double angle, and then you've got it in terms solely of sine. So if you knew sine a or sine squared a, you could find cos 2a using this formula. Now, that is our second form of the same identity, but there is a third form of that same identity, because instead of replacing cos squared a with 1 minus sine squared a, you could replace sine squared a with 1 minus cos squared a. And that's going to look like, oh, so I'm working from here now, I could say that cos squared a minus 1 minus um, cos squared a. And I get cos squared a minus minus cos squared a, so that's going to be 2 cos squared a minus 1. And that is a third very useful form of the double angle identity for cos 2a. Now, as usual, only someone very cruel and very unusual would force you to uh, uh, memorize all of these uh, identities. They'll probably appear on a formula sheet, something like that. Now, of course, we can use this identity and other ones that we already know to solve questions, so here's one. If tan theta equals 4 on 3, the, where theta is between 0 and pi on 2, so it's in quadrant 1, 
fine sine 2 theta. Okay, uh, now tan theta does not appear in any of these identities. So I'm going to need to find some way to get tan theta in terms of like sine theta or cos theta. Because I'm trying to find a double, ide double angle identity for sine. And you can see that my double angle identity is sine A, cos A. Alright, so I'm going to need to convert this to sine and cos. Now, luckily I have an identity. I can use 1 plus tan theta equals um, sec theta uh, squared, squared. 1 plus tan squared theta equals sec squared theta. And I can square that. Uh, and sec squared theta is the same as 1 on cos squared theta. Now that's going to be 1 plus 16 on 9, which is um, 25 on 9, which is 1 on cos squared theta. Uh, which means that uh, I can rearrange this, and I can just say that cos theta is equal to 3 on 5. Now, if I know that cos theta is 3 on 5, that's only half the story, I need to know what sine theta is, and I can do that in a uh, using the Pythagorean identity. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Now I know that cos squared theta is uh, 9 on 25, and sine squared theta would be this thing here, um, which when I subtract that from that, I'm going to get 16 over 25 is sine squared theta, which means that sine theta is equal to 4 on 5. And those of us who are watching might be thinking something like, what about plus or minus because you square rooted that? What about plus or minus because you square rooted that? We're in quadrant 1, so they must both be positive. Right, now that I have cos theta and sine theta, I can find sine 2 theta because I know that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine theta times cos theta. Now, sine theta is 4 on 5, cos theta is 3 on 5, and I should be able to get an answer of 24 on 25. That is the exact value of sine 2 theta in this particular question. Now, again, note, I don't know what theta is, but I don't want to know what theta is. I want to know what the sine ratio of 2 theta is, and these identities, this identity, and this identity can all work together to solve it.